Greetings, students. Thank you for attending the lesson today. My name is Ayram Kajwa. I'm a lecturer at Etlanzeni Tivet College at a campus in Lumati, teaching under ITC, which is Information Technology and Computer Science, a subject, System Analysis and Designs, Level 4, which we are going to look at a topic today under Systems Analysis and Designs. So what we are going to look at today, this topic is questionnaires as a requirement gathering technique. If you've been following my lessons, you can check that we've been collecting information using different types of data gathering tools. So a questionnaire is one of data gathering tools. Why am I doing all this? It's because we need to gather information relevant to what we are supposed to design. So that is why I'm presenting different tools. Previously, we've done an interview, we have done an observation. Today, we're going to look at a questionnaire. Why specific questionnaires? It's because questionnaires are used as a data gathering tool for many people. We are going to look at the purpose of a questionnaire. It says that it is used to survey a large group. You cannot come to a primary school during break time and you start to observe the kids. What you're going to get is people screaming and playing around. So those kind of systems that can fit in a primary are rare because children need to be playful and do all these things. When you come to a college, you cannot say, I'm going to interview all the students. And you cannot be satisfied also by just simply observing what is going on, like the processes as day to day, or simply interviewing five students, just for an example. What is going to happen is that the information that you have, you are, going to, you are not going to trust the information. You are not even sure that is it all about what I'm looking for. So this brings us to the questionnaire as data gathering tool. The purpose to survey a large group. Now, you can come to an institution where there are many people and issue out questionnaires, which are documents with questions that have to be answered and they give you back in order to collect the information and summarize and bring out all the purposes of what you are doing. Remember, you are about to build a system. So in order to have more information, you need information from different people with different opinions. So that is why I'm going to look for people with knowledge. If you want to check about a registration system, you cannot just go to anyone. You need to go to students because they know what is registration. They know how to register. They've been to registration. They know the frustrations of the problems or that they're facing during the registration. They know what is it that they enjoy doing registration. They also have ideas on how to improve the registration system. That's their opinion. So with questionnaires, you'll be able to go through a group of people, get different opinions and different information as they present it. So I'm just going to focus much on what are the advantages. Remember, every data gathering tool, I always say this, it does have its pros and cons. So the same thing with the questionnaire, as much as it's good because you're going to be collecting information on a large group of people that will be there, we are going to look at what are the advantages of a questionnaire. Here I am bringing papers in my hands, which people will assume they are just simply papers, but I know that it is a questionnaire. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at each aspect as presented there on your screen. We are going to look at most of the solutions or the answers that the people are going to give. It's truthful through confidentiality. We are going to look at what is it that a questionnaire does or how do we compile a questionnaire. But you'll remember there'll be a statement that you'll introduce before you give people questionnaires. So in all questionnaires, you should know that we always tell people that whatever that you are giving is confidential. And it is very important as an analyst 
to state that confidentiality statement so that people will be free to view out their opinions and will be free to give out information. That's one of the advantages that we have with a questionnaire. They say the time is low or time required is very low. You come in with your questionnaires, everything is written down, everything is printed, you just dish out the questionnaires and you give people instruction on how to answer the question, you give them the confidentiality statement, you also introduce yourself. So people just sit down and answer whatever that you are giving them, stating their opinions, and they'll just raise whatever point if they don't understand and bring back the questionnaires. So you're not going to take time. You can have five minutes or 10 minutes to distribute, or you can just give relevant people to help you with distribution. After that, also with collection. So this part of data collection is the one that is the fastest. So it's also relatively inexpensive. Now, why are we saying a data gathering tool is inexpensive? You are not buying it. You are going to design it, are going to present it to the student. But one thing that you should bear in mind, a system analyst's time is very expensive because the more you spend in data gathering, you are going to have less time in analysis and design, which are going to reduce the time of a programmer. And you're going to delay in submitting the system. The people that you're collecting information from, they are ones also that are going to blame you for delivering the system late. So you are always mindful of time as an analyst because we are saying that the success of a system depends on the time. When you deliver your system in time, then it is successful. When you delay, you are wasting the company's money. So that is why we are saying this one, it's inexpensive because it's not going to waste the system analyst time because you still have to sit down and analyze all the information that you're given and make sure that you record what you're looking at, bearing in mind the purpose of why you're collecting the data. Then we have unlimited number of respondents. I've made an example about an institution of learning. When you go there, you're going to have thousands of students. You can even decide that I'm going for level two. Then now, I want to see how would the level 3 answer my questionnaires. Then now, we are moving level, how will the level 4 answer my questionnaires? So we have unlimited number of respondents. If people will say that I'm not even in the mood of answering this questionnaire, we are not going to be downgraded morally because you know that now I can go to another group since I'm having a lot of people to choose from. So this is an advantage of a questionnaire. Now we look at the disadvantage. Yes, it has have many advantages and they are something that you can look on and you want to do. Remember, we are saying a questionnaire as a requirement. I need to use this. Why? Okay, so the disadvantage is that no opportunity to rephrase your questions. No opportunity to rephrase your questions. Now we have plotted down your questions. We have confirmed them. You have tested them. Everything is okay. You are giving these people this question. When you are receiving them back, you find that, oh, these people are answering somehow. And because they have already answered, you don't have a chance to rephrase your question. Two, not committed. You'll find that people, in most cases, even your students, you usually do that, that when you are given a question, say that, ah, there is no confidentiality. Or why do they want to gather information about it? Just, okay. Why do they say yes? Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. Whatever that I have to explain just like that. So as a system analyst, you'll find that out we have gathered irrelevant information because the people we are giving the questionnaires to were not committed. We look at the possible incomplete responses. You'll find that people decide that let's take the shortcut ones. Just going to tick, 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 where they say explain says none. And remember, there is no name, there is no number because you said this thing is going to be confidential. So you find that most responses are not completed. Then you look at the last one, limited chance to get clarity. Now a person writes that I don't like registering around January. I think you can move maybe a little bit to June because if semesters have January and June, why not NCVS? And now you want to know, why is this student saying this? You don't have time to get clarity on that. So questionnaires, after designing them, you give it to the people that we want to gather information from, you'll find that all the answers that we have, or most of them, you still need clarity. That is why before we look at one of them, which you called observation, then you'll go back and observe. But what we have on the table 
is incomplete. So we are going to look at how do we design a questionnaire? How do we design a questionnaire? Remember, a questionnaire is something written on a paper, a set of questions you can have. This is your paper or a chart. And of course, you need to give it also a topic. For example, then you are going to say a registration survey. So now we are looking at designing a questionnaire. Now, what first thing that we have presented on the board is that when a person gets this paper, okay, registration survey, this thing has to do with registration. Then further, the student wants to know, or the people that are answering, what is it that we are going to focus on? So when you're designing a questionnaire, there are elements that we need to put on a questionnaire. There are elements that need not to be left out when you're designing a questionnaire. First of all, we are going to look at an introduction. When you start with an introduction here, on an intro, it is very important to introduce the purpose of the questionnaire. Okay, I'm going to collect information about the current registration system that we are using. That is the purpose. You also introduce yourself, the system analyst. This also on the introduction. Then you also come after the system analyst. This can be your name, then attach on it. You can even just say system analyst because you have already said what is the purpose of the system that you are collecting or why are you there to give them questionnaires to answer. So it is very important to say that this is going to be the person collecting information, a very important statement which you need to note as part of examination purposes. You cannot just say the purpose system analyst, remember, we are dealing with a questionnaire. It's different from all the other data gathering tools. You need to state what we call the confidentiality statement. Why is that? Because whenever you give people a survey, they need to feel free to view out their opinions. They need to feel free to say that, okay, I can answer the way I like it. I can bring out all my opinions. Actually, I'm free to answer the questions. They are not going to hide any information. They'll be free to give it. But immediately, there is no confidentiality statement. We are not even sure that at the end of the survey, they'll say state your name. Because we have names that are similar most of the time, but immediately you state my name. I'm not sure that you're going to take my survey and give it to the person that I know because now you're collecting information. I might say things according to my opinion, which are going to be taken. So immediately, a person see the statement confidentiality knows okay this is going to be kept between me and the system analyst remember after putting the confidentiality statement now the information becomes private between you and the person if you linked whatever the person has written if there is a name you said whoever said this then you're breaching your contract with that company okay so we're going to look at the second part this is an introduction of the Questionnaires. So we are going to come to the part of instructions. Remember, we need to design a questionnaire that is suitable for people to answer them. So we look at the instructions. If you can just hand out questionnaires to people and say, just fill in information, answer them. People might say like, okay, how do I have to write everything? You find that people are writing out of the context or the boxes that we have given them because there are no instructions. So it is very important that on the second part of the elements of a questionnaire that you said, how do you answer the questions? What is it that you are expected to do on the questionnaire? You can even give them that you need to feel free. Those are the instructions. Make sure that you use a tick or a cross. That is why you find that when you are given information that you have to fill in, if you are given a form, just three people will find that wherever there is a checkbox, a checkbox is something like this, which you usually tick according to a computer. But if it's blank, if you are given a checkbox, I can decide to put a cross. Someone can decide to put a tick. Someone can decide to put a dot. We have all selected the same checkbox, but in a different way. 
So when it comes to instruction, you need to say, use a cross to answer some of the questions. So we know that whenever we say a box, just have to cross. Gender or whatever, I'm just crossing. So if they say use a tick, use a tick. You come back again on the instructions. Some of us we have problem with visibility. We cannot see well. A person might use a pencil to write. A person might use a red pen. Okay? So it's important that you specify that use a pen or so on because a, a pencil can be simply erased. So those comes to a instructions. Then you come to the types of questions that are going to be asked. So this also projected what types of questions that are going to be asked. We are going to look at the types of questions in details. That's why we have various elements of a questionnaire. So what are the elements of a questionnaire? According to my projection there, it says that a demographic section. When you're looking at types of question, you may ask a person about their age, their race, their gender. That is why some people are not even comfortable to say their age. Here comes the confidentiality statement. They won't mind to say anything there, which is right. You'll be able to say that, okay, 80% of the people who answered, they were between 18 and 21 because people were being honest. Okay? Your questions also, we're coming to the type of the questions, they also include open-ended questions where you just bring out a question and you say to the person, elaborate. Okay, if you say yes, if you tick yes, explain why. Those are open-ended questions. When you say just, what is your gender? That one comes to a close-ended question. I'm a female, I'm a male. Marital status, I'm single, I'm married. Those are close-ended questions. What is your course that you're doing? I'm doing information technology and computer science. That's a straightforward question. It's a closed question. But immediately you want them to explain why are you saying that. It comes to an open-ended questions. So we have something new about the questions that we haven't done. We are looking at rating questions. How do you rate questions or how do you rate answers? When you're looking at rating, we are saying that this usually happens when those agents call you and say that from the scale, that's why I said you're going to use a scale, you have to rate according to scale. We'll ask the person from the scale of one to five, how do you find your campus entertainment or what is it that entertains you much in your campus? You rate them, they'll tell you that well, how is the scale, you're going to have one to five, they can, any number you can select, but you need to explain between the scale, one being mostly likely, it depends that I like it, this one, or five being poor. Either way, it depends on the questionnaire, how did you put it in order to explain for the people to answer. But all the rating questions have a scale, or you can have the ways to say that, strongly agree, can have words, one being strongly agree, five being strongly disagree. I know we've been seeing this in many questionnaires. So we call these questions rating questions. So I'll come to the next one, which is ranking questions. When we are ranking them, we, we rate them with conditions. Now, this seems to say that I'm interested in social media. One being mostly, or sorry, one being strongly agree, the other one strongly disagree. But now I'm given a condition to explain why do I have to rank this? So the condition may be, okay, according to the temperature that is happening now, you need to explain why, what can you say about the temperature? Do you strongly agree that it has to do with global warming or not? You are given a condition that you have to look at, okay, yes, the temperature is changing, but is it really global warming? Remember, with questionnaires, there are no correct answers, there are no wrong answers. That is why, as an analyst, you have to keep in mind that people are going to state their own opinions because this is what you're actually looking for in order to improve. People are going to say whatever they think of, of what you're asking them. So these are the kinds of questions that you are going to look at. I just want us to look at an example of one of the elements. Remember, the first one was demographic questions. So demographic has to do with your marital status, has to do with your gender, your race, where you are staying, and so on. So what I'm projecting there, it says that, what is your marital status? There is a checkbox, which is supposed to be 
dealt with under instructions. Now, when you come to that one, I want to know, do I tick? Do I put a cross or do I do whatever that I'm thinking of? If instructions are not clear, everyone's going to do anything. So, and another thing, you need to be careful that since this can be spoiled, remember, I'm just bringing this, what is your marital status? All of a sudden, a person thinks that, okay, let me use a cross. And the person goes and cross on the part of singing. And he said, nah, let me just tell this person that I'm married. Now you're not sure that, was this person crossing or what? And you cannot be singing and married at the same time. That is impossible. You cannot be both singing and married at the same time. So this, again, is part of the instruction to say that, how do I cancel if I've selected? You can simply say, draw a line throughout because you'll find someone doing this. And there is a part to say that, put a dot in order to answer. When someone drinks, you're not that sure that person is cancelling or that person is selecting the correct information. So make sure that whenever you're bringing out information, you bring clarity, you bring correct instructions. Which brings me to the part of controls mostly used in questionnaires. What is a control? As a system analyst, you also did programming or you are doing programming in TVET colleges because we do all the courses. So we are using the same controls that we are doing in programming and you also name them the same because if this is a box, we all know that we call it a checkbox. Why you say a checkbox? Because it must be checked in order, in order to answer your questions. We have the first one which we call it a radio button. A radio button, it has something round and a small dot inside. So I know we are familiar with this one from programming level two, intro to system development, PCP level three, and of course, computer programming level four. It's also part of system analysis and designs from level two to level four, which in level two is intro to information systems. So this is a radio button. So as I've indicated, there's a small dot there. We use them in order for people to select. Remember, there is a difference between a checkbox and a radio button. That is why you'll find that there are questions that need selection, which they've included a checkbox and the other one a radio box. What is the difference? A checkbox allows you to select more than one answers. So if you can check on the example previous that I've made of saying your marital status using a box, it doesn't mean you have to check because when you check, you're going to check one, two, you can be single and be married at the same time. So with a radio party, you are going to select, when you select the next one, this one is being unselected automatically. Why are we doing this? Why do we have to bring back controls in designing a questionnaire? It's because that you are going to do questionnaires even online. Well, we have an example called that a survey monkey. A survey monkey is a software, a free software online that helps you to design your questionnaire online. So you're not going to bring checkboxes just like a paper. You need to make sure that, okay, this one, I have to make it mandatory. A person must answer. If we select the other one and come back to say that I've selected the wrong part, when they select the next one, it's going to change and unselect the first one, give you that one. A checkbox is then when I say that, what, what are the social platforms that you know? You can use a, a checkbox. Some people can select Twitter, Facebook, and so on. A checkbox is relevant. That is why I'm bringing all these controls. Okay, I've already explained a checkbox. We are looking at a text box. A text box, like we say, it's a box which can contain text. I know that in programming is also part of declaration, but in system analysis, remember, it's all about capturing information. So you are going to write, when you limit the box or when designing the, check, the text box, make sure that the space is enough for a person to write or to type. I'll take an example. If you can say it's optional, Remember, there is a confidential statement, write your name. Do not give me a small box because I have to write a full name. We have to extend it. So that is a text box. We have labels. Labels go in hand with the text and of course a line. For example, explain. So this is a label. So all in all, for what we have done today, is how to design a proper questionnaire 
following all the principles and making sure that people are ready to take it in order to give you information that you need. So what we have done today, if you need clarity or you need to ask a question related to questioners, most of the things that I've presented are part of what you'll get in your examination because whenever they ask, we have to know how to design a text, a text boxes, what's the difference between a text box and a checkbox, why do we need a purpose, why do we need instructions, all these things are covered. Make sure that you understand. So if you need clarity or you need more information on the lesson of today, you can contact us on our college website, which is www.ethlanzenipresented.co.za, our Facebook page, simply Ethlanzenitivet College, and of course, we also have our teacher, which is Ethlanzeni Tivet. So, that's all what I have for you today in this lesson. It's, I'm Kadra. Thank you for watching. And of course, you're still staying at home, quarantine, and be safe. Thank you.